In 1984, Universal and Lorimar presented The Last Starfighter. Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sur and the Kodan Armada. Get ready. Prepare for blast off. I played Alex Rogan, a kid from an isolated mountain trailer park who's recruited to fight in an interstellar war when he breaks the record on a seemingly ordinary video game. Hi, I'm Lance Guest. All of us who worked on The Last Starfighter were drawn to its charming story, its witty dialogue, and its tongue-in-cheek treatment of good old-fashioned space adventure fantasy, all of which formed the base of its continuing popularity. But if there's one element that earns a distinctive place in cinema history, it's the film's groundbreaking use of computer-generated visual effects. So now, let's cross the galaxy to that war-torn planet of Rylos and hear from director Nick Castle and the rest of the artists that crossed another frontier that led to the amazing new world of digital effects technology. Long before technology enters the scene, there's always the idea, the story, and the writer. I was a junior copywriter at an advertising agency in New York, and uh, I would find myself with large blocks of time between account meetings or whatever, and uh, I, was, I, I started writing screenplays. It was funny, because one day... And you're down here like this, and I want to not see you, and then come up firing right at where King is at this point. I would always try to get him to rehearse the scenes with me. Shooting camera left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the guy was in his mid-70s. And he would always say, yeah, hey, I'm a theater actor. I'll, I'll do it as much time, many times as you want. Action. It was amazing. He still had that great energy, and he was tremendous in the film. Phew. Foul stench. Dirty creatures. <coughs> now get a good look, Alex. You can bet your asteroids you'll be seeing more of them. Either you fight, or you get used to that smell. Look out, Alex! Uh, Centauri! Yeah, I'm Centauri. You okay? We're... <clears throat> Beta, get a doctor. No, no, no native cures or witch doctors. I'm fine. You know, it's a license to steal. It's a wonderful way to make a living. And uh, I, I wish the world could enjoy its job as much as I enjoy mine. Rita. Rita now. When The Last Starfighter was completed, everyone agreed that the tremendous musical score composed by Craig Saffin was a key element in holding everyone's work together. I mean, I love the story of the kid, and I love him getting his dream and leaving and going to outer space. And it's, you know, as corny as it is, taking the girl to outer space with him. I felt that if I could find a theme that, when played slow, would be the love theme, like, you know, dun, da, 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 or if it's played bum, 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 no matter how you would play it, you could be exciting, in love. You, you just express the, the sort of soul of the picture. Craig Sathen's themes really did make the film come alive. He created both the intimate moments of it very well, and then taking it up uh, to the grandeur of space. He combined the two so, so well. None of the computer animation was done, so I would see a dot, like a white dot, and then maybe a white square, and Nick would be standing over my shoulder. He was given ideas of what was happening, and blank cards uh, went in those places for him to score, 
but actually I got to talk him through what was happening and what I thought it would look like. Here's the mothership, and this is the Kodan warrior, and here they meet, and there's a huge explosion. And I, I mean, none of this was on the screen except these little teeny dots. And so I had to sort of imagine the, the, the power of it and the, the big ships and all that to be able to write a huge orchestra and all the power of a hundred-piece orchestra, you know, to, to support this action. Within a decade of Starfighter's release, computer effects technology had advanced far beyond everyone's expectations. Even the artists at Industrial Light and Magic, responsible for the effects in the Star Wars films and Jurassic Park, were astounded at how rapidly the technology had evolved. John Whitney and I decided to pursue the full potential of computer graphics, not just to get a big feature project, you know, scale back, let's, not, let's take it easy. Let's, we wanted to really explore what was possible. And we had done an X-Wing fighter ship test for George Lucas in 78. I wanted to prove that it was possible to use a computer system to create more exciting story points and, and more dynamics on the screen. I think the test had been around for a while, and I can't remember who I saw it with. But I remember walking into the screening room when this test was being shown, and I just said, my god, you know, there's no way that I could have programmed this shot. There's no way I could have gotten these maneuvers. There's no way I could have visualized this in advance to be able to see these ships flying along. And one of them, I remember, sort of does a big loop-de-loop -loop and flies up out of camera range, comes back and flies right by the camera. I couldn't have even figured out how to pre-visualize that to, in order to be able to try it even in motion control. It was really neat. And I remember the number of the folks there that were looking at this were not impressed at all. It was like, oh, well, well okay, that's it. And they sort of turned it off. But boy, you could see there was a future, you know, and it just needed time and money, you know, to take care of it. So development, you know, a lot of people in there building hardware and software to be able to, to get it to a point where it was going to pay off, and it sure has. I think Last Starfighter is a landmark in that it's the first film that uh, attempted to go completely computer generated with all the visual effects. It was a gutsy move. I applaud the effort. I think there's a lot of great design work there. We brought a Cray XMP to its knees um, uh, producing these environments. I believe that if it hadn't worked, somebody else would have had the courage to do it, but uh, the fact that we did it obviously started it off. All the special effects had us started researching how to do it on computers, and then um, that's how it got to where it is today. There were earlier films that used computer graphics, but computer graphics was always used to portray computer graphics. As of The Last Starfighter, it was the first film that actually used computer graphics to portray what used to be portrayed with models and miniatures. The Last Starfighter really was the first film to do that. There was stuff that was done in that show that, that should have knocked people's socks off and there should have been a flock of people into digital productions to say, well, let's talk about how you did this stuff. Or at least other companies going, well, they did this, so we got to be able to do this. No one took the gamble, though. No one really took the gamble. That's what this movie really is about. Who took the gamble? And it was Gary Adelson, Laura Marr, and Digital Productions. They went out on a limb and said, we're going to do it, and we're going to get a Cray computer, and we're going to make a, a spaceship fly through the, through the sky, and you're going to believe it. Having done these pictures now, both with animatronics and with computer-generated imagery, for 15 or 16 years, I, I know all the tricks to try to make it seem effortless and seamless. And back then, I, uh, I wasn't completely sure. And uh, I don't think anybody else was either. With the other kinds of directors, writers, slash producer people, none of this could have happened. And Nick Castle and Jonathan Betchel, while they bemoaned their fate on a regular basis, they were so supportive for whatever success that the visual effects achieved in it, it all goes to, to uh, Nick Castle on one level because he enabled everybody and he fought the battles on behalf of myself and, and on digital productions against all odds more frequently than not. The gift that Nick brought to it was that the effects basically enhanced the story. And it's just a simple story. If it wasn't for uh, them going to outer space, you could take it anywhere. I mean, going to the desert, going to the jungle, and having an adventure. So in that sense, it's a timeless story. I love you, Alex Rogan. We're 
the last few years with regard to the movie, this is, people will come up to me and say, oh, you did that, you wrote that, and what a sweet, sweet movie. And it seems to be a timeless theme of reaching out for the stars and coming to grips with the fact that everything that's really important was right at your doorstep. The Last Starfighter was a one-of-a-kind experience for all of us who were part of it. Those behind the camera, those in front of the camera, and those in front of a computer screen. In the end, its unique achievement teaches us the same lesson as Alex Rogan's story. Never stop reaching for the stars. Hey, it's Lisa here with some behind the scenes trivia. Now, the first recorded use of special effects as we know them was done in 1857 by Oscar Rieslander. He took 30 different photo negatives and combined them into a single image. This was the first example of the montage print. Now, if you haven't already done it, remember to click here below to subscribe or on the side for more great content.